Stop buying bad CPU and GPU combos. Let's get you the best CPU and GPU combo in 2025. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now in 2025, with the graphics card market being so challenging, it has never been more important to get the best CPU and GPU combo for gaming. But figuring out the best CPU for gaming and the best GPU for gaming by themselves, that's hard enough. Putting them together for the best CPU and GPU combo, it's even harder. So today, we're gonna go through everything that you need to know and give you specific recommendations at every budget level to get you the best CPU and GPU combo for gaming in 2025. If you get value out of this video, please give a like and of course subscribe for more cool PC content. Let's jump into it. Let's start off with GPU availability. Now at the time of filming, it is very difficult to get a graphics card due to undersupply by Nvidia, who typically supply about 80% of the GPUs in the market. While we hope this situation improves in the future, the current situation makes it even more important to follow the advice in this video and get the best performance. The current GPU models that we expect to be restocked are the RTX 50 series and the RX 9000 series at the high end and mid range, with more budget models like the RTX 5060 and RX 9060 series probably by mid 2025. So those are the GPUs that we're gonna focus on in this video, along with budget offerings that are still available on the market. Check out our monthly GPU market update videos linked down in the video description for the most up-to-date market conditions and our recommendations. Now, the number one most important concept to getting the right CPU and GPU combo in 2025, it's called bottlenecking. This means that one of our components is limiting our performance. Now, when this happens, the only way to get more performance is to upgrade that component that's currently limiting us. For a gaming PC build, the typical bottleneck is the CPU versus the GPU. Now, if our CPU cannot keep up with our GPU, then increasing the speed of the CPU will give us more FPS. But if our GPU is the bottleneck, then getting a faster GPU instead will increase our FPS performance. The CPU is more likely to bottleneck when we're pushing huge amounts of frames, and our GPU is usually the bottleneck when we turn up the resolution from 1080p to 1440p to 4K, including if the GPU does not have enough VRAM to run the latest AAA titles on release at higher ultra settings. No matter what, our system is always gonna have a bottleneck. It's our job as PC builders to understand how to maximize our PC build performance, whether that's in gaming, streaming, video editing, or having multi-threaded workloads. Now, once we figure that part out, we wanna spend most of our budget on the component that's bottlenecking bottlenecking our overall performance. But so many PC builders get this wrong and they buy a bad CPU and GPU combo. Our goal for a gaming PC build in 2025 is to maximize our FPS for our available budget. Now that means buying the fastest graphics card that we can afford while only spending enough on our CPU platform that it does not bottleneck our GPU. The smaller your budget, the more important it is to get the best CPU and GPU balance. Now, of course, the term budget is very important here. As if we had unlimited money, then of course, we get the fastest CPU, GPU, SSD, and everything else. And we spend about $6,000 to $10,000 or more on the fastest gaming PC on planet Earth. But most PC builders, they can't spend that much. So getting the right balance for their money, that's critical. For example, say we wanna build a 1440p gaming PC with a Ryzen 7600X CPU and an RX 9070 16 gigabyte GPU, then we decide to increase our budget another $200. Where should we spend it? Now we could upgrade the CPU to a Ryzen 9700X, which is only about three to 5% faster on average at 1440p with the RX 9070 GPU. So we spent $200 for maybe a 5% more FPS increase. But if instead we use that $200 to up our GPU to an RX 9070 XT, that would net us about 12 to 15% more FPS at 1440p, especially if we primarily play very graphic intensive games like Black Myth Wukong. And remember that as we go up in resolution from 1080p to 1440p to 4K, that decreases the load on our CPU and it increases the load on our GPU. In 2025, VRAM bottlenecks for graphics cards are also worth considering. Now, while 12 gigabytes of VRAM, still probably enough for most 1440p gaming, turning on upscaling like DLSS, it does use more VRAM. And of course, turning on heavy ray tracing uses even more VRAM. That's going from a graphics card like an RTX 5070 12 gigabyte up to an RX 9070 XT 16 gigabyte or RTX 5070 Ti 16 gigabyte can also have added benefits to consider. This can be especially true for more budget builders if you're looking at like an eight gigabyte graphic card or even moving to 10 or 12 gigabytes on your GPU might allow them to improve their experience at 1440p or even 1080p by going to high or ultra settings. But what about production or creator workloads that need more CPU power? 
Now for these use cases, we want more balance, but it does depend heavily on the types of programs that you're using. Take video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. While going up from a six core to an eight core processor, it does help. So does increasing your GPU power for rendering and export. Oversizing your CPU at the expense of your GPU, that's actually gonna hurt your overall performance, and we see this in a lot of professional applications. That's why it's so important for professional users to understand their suite of software programs and the recommended system requirements so that you can get the right CPU and GPU balance for your workloads. All right, let's jump into our recommendations for best CPU and GPU combo for gaming in 2025. We're gonna go through both AMD Ryzen as well as Intel offerings here. Now, everything's linked down in the video description along with resources like our build guide list for the most popular CPUs, our how to build a PC playlist with how to build a PC, of course, and how to buying guides, and our regular CPU and GPU market update videos for the latest on pricing, availability, and our recommendations. Right now, the CPUs that I would consider are the Ryzen 9000, 7000 series, and 5000 series for budget builds. In 2025, I no longer recommend CPUs that are PCIe Gen 3 only, like the Ryzen 5500 and 5700 non-X. You can check out our PC parts to avoid in 2025 for more on why that is. On the Intel side, we're gonna look at the Intel Core Ultra 200 CPUs, 13th and 14th gen unlocked parts as well for mid-range builds, and 12th gen Intel CPUs for budget builds. But I am currently not recommending Core Ultra 200 because of its general bugginess, which Intel seems unable to fix. I am now recommending 13th and 14th gen Intel CPUs again, because Intel does seem to have fixed the degradation issues using the latest BIOS, but I am leaving off the i9-13900K and 14900K just to be safe. Starting off at the budget level, you can build a gaming PC right now for just about $550 US with all new parts. Now at this level, we really want the cheapest CPU platform that just isn't gonna bottleneck our GPU. I'm leveling up our recommendations from last year, so we're not looking at the weaker i3 Intel CPUs or again, CPUs that cannot run at PCI Gen 4 speed like the Ryzen 5500. So right now the best options are the Ryzen 5600 variants, including the brand new Ryzen 5600T, which performs similarly to the Ryzen 5600X, and you can pick it up for only $99 right now. And of course the i5-12400F at around $110. Now they both come with stock coolers capable of cooling them, something that can't be said for the more expensive Ryzen 5700X or i5 CPUs like the 12600K, 13400, or 14400. We want to pair these CPUs with budget motherboards. For the Ryzen 5600 CPUs, we're using a B550 motherboard like the MSI Pro VDH Wi-Fi for about $89, or the ASRock B550M Pro 4 for $99. For the i5-12400F, we are looking for any cheap 600 or 700 series Intel motherboard, like the ASRock B660M Pro RS for $110, ASRock Z790M PG Lightning for $120, or similar board. For RAM, I recommend using both with a $43 kit of two by 16 gigabyte DDR4-3200 CL16 RAM for a total of 32 gigabytes. Now this brings the total cost of these platforms to between $233 and $263. For our GPU, we could go with either a new GPU or a used one. For new GPUs, you can still pick up an Intel Arc A580 for as little as $170, the Arc A750 for about $200, or an RX 6600 for about $210. On the NVIDIA side, really the cheapest options here are probably the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte or RTX 4060 8 gigabyte, though both of those GPUs have limited stock right now. They may sell out soon. Other possibilities include the ARC B580 12GB, which has been in short supply and quite expensive, or the ARC B570 10GB, which has been available but for around $280. Note the B-series Intel GPUs have a bit of a CPU overhead issue, so I do recommend using them at a minimum resolution of 1440p, not 1080p. And we do expect new sub $300 offerings from AMD with the RX 9060 and NVIDIA with the RTX 5060. In terms of a maximum GPU, these CPUs start hitting a wall right around where we expect the RX 9060 XT and RTX 5060 Ti to come in when they launch. This would translate roughly to around an RX 7800 XT or RTX 4060 Ti performance levels 
in the last generation. At that point, these CPUs can get overwhelmed very quickly in CPU intensive games or at high FPS and competitive titles like Marvel Rivals. So it's definitely time to look to the next level of CPU performance. The next CPU tier up, kind of the beginning of the mid range that I would look to on the AMD side is either the Ryzen 7600 or 7600X for 180 to $200. If you want a little bit more CPU punch, the 9600X is currently selling for $230 and seems to be coming down in price. Now in the US, Newegg often sells the 7600X with a one terabyte SSD deal that brings the CPU price down to just $170. I will leave a link to that in the video description. If you're outside the US, the Ryzen 7500F is also fine here, although I'm not ready to recommend the 7400F. And just say no to Ryzen 8000 APUs. Now on the Intel side, they have finally discounted the i5 13600K to around $200 with the 14600K at around $240. I would definitely not consider the slower and way more expensive Core Ultra 5 CPUs. They're also really buggy. Either the Ryzen 7600X, 9600X, or the i5 13600K will offer us quite a massive up a 20% increase in FPS over the previous tier of CPUs when using a mid-range to high-end GPU like the RX 9070, 9070 XT, or 5070 Ti. I'll leave our Ryzen 7600X and 9600X build guides linked below. For the Ryzen builds, we go with a budget B650 or B850 motherboard, like my new favorite ASRock B850 M-X Wi-Fi for just $120, the Asus Tough B650-E for $140, or the MSI B650 Gaming Wi-Fi for $150. We also want to replace the stock cooler with a budget tower air cooler for around $25, like the id cooling SE214 XT. For Intel builds, we'd like a Z690 or Z790 DDR5 motherboard, like the ASRock Z790 Pro RS, ASRock Z690 PG Velocita, or Z790 Live Mixer, all around $160. And we need a bit more cooling here for the i5s, so we're gonna go with a dual tower air cooler like the id cooling A620 for $30 or the Thermorite Phantom Spirit for around $40. We want DDR5 6000 CL30 RAM for both builds, as this is the best for Ryzen and it's also the best price and performance for Intel. We can find non-RGB kits for around $85 and RGB kits for around $95 in 32 gigabyte total capacity. This gives us an upgrade cost over the previous CPU tier of between $212 and $257. For our GPU combo, I would look at a minimum of an RX 7600 8GB or 16GB GPU, an RTX 4060 8GB or ARC B580 12GB GPU. Now, at the time of filming, I'm expecting replacements for NVIDIA and AMD to launch very soon in the RTX 5060, 5060 Ti, and RX 9060 and 9060 XT. These CPUs are great performers for the price overall, and they could easily be paired with the RX 9070 or RTX 5070. They will start to fall off right around the RX 9070 XT or 5070 Ti performance level, but you could luckily push them up to an RTX 5080. At this point, we definitely want to consider the next CPU performance tier. Jumping up to our upper mid-range CPU and GPU combos, we basically have two options here. At current pricing for this budget level, the best gaming CPUs are the Ryzen 7700, 7700X, and Ryzen 9700X, which can be had for anywhere between $250 and $300. For gaming on the AMD Ryzen side, we do not want to go to the more expensive 12 or 16 core count non-X3D CPUs, as we don't pick up any more gaming performance over the eight core models and we spend more money. For Intel, my first preference would be the i7-14700K, but you can also consider the Ultra 7 265K as well. Both are currently selling for around $330. Now these CPUs will bump up our average FPS by around 5% over the previous tier at 1440p using a mid-range or high-end GPU, so this is not a huge increase and the most impact is likely going to be seen improved 1% low frame rates. For motherboards, I've increased our spending to a better B650 or B850 motherboard with more premium features like the Asus Tough B650 Plus for $170, but you could of course use any of the budget to mid-range boards from the Ryzen 7600X build. For the i7-14700K, I'd stick to the boards that I listed for the 13600K build, but we can spend a little bit more here if we want to as well. For the Ultra 7 CPU, we're likely stuck with a B860 motherboard like the Gigabyte B860 Eagle for around $170, 
You could also spend quite a bit more on a Z890 motherboard like the Aorus Elite Wi-Fi Ice for $190 to $200. And for RAM, we're sticking with DDR5 6000 CL30. That's just optimal for Ryzen and it's also the best price to performance for Intel. At this point, we also want at least a dual tower air cooler for between $30 and $50 for all these builds. And you can even find some 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid coolers around that same price now by id cooling and thermorite for our gpu combo i would look to a minimum of an rx 9070 16 gigabyte or rtx 5070 12 gigabyte gpu you don't want to go with a lesser gpu here and this is the tier that i'm most worried about people oversizing their cpu at the expense of their gpu you can take these combos all the way up to an RX 9070 XT and beyond to the RTX 5080 or even the 5090. Of course, we hit a lot of bottleneck with almost any gaming CPU that isn't an X3D CPU with the RTX 5090. So at that point, we really just wanna move up in terms of our CPU performance to the next tier. All right, let's jump up to the current ultimate tier of gaming CPUs in 2025. That is the 9800X3D. With the 9950X3D mentioned here, only if you also do a lot of production or professional work that would benefit from more than eight CPU cores. Just know there's really no gaming performance difference between these two CPUs, you're just spending more money. We do have build guides on the channel for the 9800X3D and a 9950X build guide that would work just fine for the 9950X3D, and I will leave them linked down in the video description. Let me know down in the comments if you would like me to do a specific 9950X3D build guide video. Now the 9800X3D, it can be stock challenged at times, but you'll generally find it for $480. The 9950X3D, it's also very stock challenged, it just launched and the list price is $699. You can also find the 7800X3D for about $30 less than a 9800X3D. I'd say spend the 30 bucks and get the 9800X3D. I generally don't like the other Ryzen 7000X3D parts or the 9900X3D as they're just lower performance. And note that Intel just can't keep up with these CPUs, so don't even bother with the i9-1400K or Ultra 9 285K. The Ryzen 9800X3 or 9950X3D is gonna offer at least 10% better gaming performance with an RTX 4090 at 1440p ultra detail settings, even more with an RTX 5090 if you can get one, and in some titles, the performance increase is even more massive. We're gonna pair our Ryzen 9800X3D or 9950X3D with a B650E, X670E, B850 or X870E motherboard just for the PCIe Gen 5 GPU slot, and that's just in case it's ever relevant. So we're gonna find a motherboard like the ASRock B850 Live Mixer for $189, Asus Prime X670E for $209, or MSI B850 Tomahawk for $229. Check out our best Ryzen motherboard 2025 video for a lot more high-end options. We want any of the dual tower air coolers we've listed before for the 9800X3D. My strong recommendation for the 9950X3D, go for a high performance liquid cooler for around $100, like the 280 millimeter Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 or the Cooler Master Master Liquid 360 millimeter. For RAM, we could use a DDR5 6000 CL30 kit, but I spent an extra 20 bucks going to DDR5 6000 CL28 because we're running out of things to upgrade basically. The 9800X3D upgrade is about $249 over the previous tier with the 9950X upgrade being $529 more expensive than the previous CPU tier. For GPU combos, I'd recommend a minimum of a Radeon RX 9070 XT. Right now that's AMD's fastest graphics card in this generation or look at an NVIDIA RTX 5070 Ti. Obviously, this is the fastest gaming CPU on the planet, so we can pair it with the RTX 5080 and RTX 5090 if you can find one. Congratulations, you own one of the fastest gaming PCs on planet Earth. And AMD is rumored to be working on a GPU faster than the RX 9070 XT, so yes, this would also be great for that as well. I've linked all the CPUs and GPUs mentioned in this video down in the video description. Check out those links for updated and current pricing. Also check out our build guides for specific CPUs in the PC build guide video playlist and all of our other how-to videos like the best RAM for gaming 2025, best Ryzen motherboard, and of course, how to build an actual PC in our how to build a PC 2025 playlist. If you got value out of this video, please give a like as it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. And we'll catch you on the next one.